Hey, welcome back to Drive In Garage with Alan. I'm back at, at Street Metal Concepts. It's the day after Hurricane Nicole. So let's go inside and see what the guys are working on. This is the 1965 Impala Super Sport that just got a four speed put in it. And Eric is cleaning it up. Look at that. Look at that. That is absolutely gorgeous, man. Let's get a closer look at that. Wow, look at that, the clock works. Mm -hmm. That is a beautiful job, Eric. Thank you. So what did you do to it, Eric? Pretty much removed the automatic that it had and made a new tunnel. Uh-huh. Um, at OEM specs, I had all the OEM specs for it. Right. And shaped a new tunnel, covered up the old automatic hole, assemble it to uh, what's supposed to be factory. Uh, made a boot for it and got the center console installed as well. Well, I tell you what, buddy, that looks awesome. Thank you. Yeah, when you're done detailing this, you're going to detail mine. The first two hours of operation on your new four speed transmission is very critical, similar to breaking in a new camshaft. Two hour rod, huh, Eric? This is the Camaro that is getting an engine swap. Ian's in the middle of taking the motor out of it. And this should be coming out pretty soon. Shouldn't be too much longer. Kind of taking things off of this motor and putting it on that motor after I revamp them, like little odds and ends, like little brackets and right. stuff like that. Um, after that, I'm gonna try today to get this motor out, that motor in with everything in, and minus transmission. Today. Awesome. Draining all the fluids so this motor can come out of here. Okay, so the next step in this engine swap is to remove the transmission. And to do that, you've got to get in here and you've got to take the throttle or the shift linkage all out. Make sure it'll drop out without doing any damage to the console. And the next thing you got to do is remove the drive shaft, which Ian is doing now. Pulling the bolts out, get my head out from underneath of it before it falls on me. So there we go. Here comes the drive shaft out of it. So, do you enjoy doing these motor swaps? I would rather do motor swaps than the majority of anything. Really? Yeah, it's just repetitive, puts me in a better mood. They go by a little bit faster because you're always having something to do versus sitting there and going, oh, well, you know, trying to reverse engineer something or. Uh, something like that. This is just pop in, go. Right, right. So, yeah, no, I love this stuff. Makes the day go by quicker for Ian. Way easier. And he's got to get this chain around the transmission to lock it into place so it doesn't fall off the stand. All right, so he's got to pull this cross member out. Sometimes it can be a real fight to get those to come out of there. All right, so there comes the cross member. So the next step is to undo the bell housing bolts, and it should come right on out of there. And there are six bolts holding that on there. So once he gets those six bolts taken out of the bell housing, he should be able to pull that transmission down and out of there and get it out of the way for the facilitation of the motor swap. So now, before pulling the transmission out, he wants to make sure that he has the rear end of that oil pan supported so that the motor doesn't put any bad strain on anything under yeah. there and bend I over. I don't want the distributor to hit the firewall and break. Right, right. Or hit the, or hit the firewall at all. Okay. But this is just temporary so that this motor does not move while I take the transmission out. Once I get the transmission out, then I'll secure the engine, the back of the engine, so it doesn't rock back. I'll lower the car out, remove the motor mounts, and this engine comes out. Awesome. So he's down to the last bolt, I believe. All right, I think he's got, you got all the bolts out, Ian? Yeah, we're gonna see if it comes out. All right, so here Normally we go. It'll come out very easily, but sometimes you get lucky. Yep. Hey, 
Easy. That took you all what, 30 seconds? Yep. Maybe 20 seconds. Sometimes you just gotta take out the distributor. Yep. Sometimes you can get away with it. Most of the time you can get away with it. I mean, there's a lot of cars that can get away with it, but this wasn't her. So now I just move this over where it can pee in private. All right, so now the transmission's out of it. Next step is to get the motor out. All right, so I'm back here with Casey and he is working on the rear bumper of the Hot Wheels Tribute truck. And it looks like he's doing a little bit of cleanup. Making sure everything looks good. Looks like you got some work here to do or no? Uh, no, it's going to be floaters right there. Is pretty, it? Pretty much what we're doing is we got our uh, second bumper in, so we're going to go ahead and wrap our back pieces here. Uh -huh. uh, this side's already done. I was uh, finishing up this morning. We're going to go ahead and jump into that other side and get the wrap around on there. Right. And then we'll get her back in epoxy today. Okay, so this is a full wraparound Camaro uh -huh. rear bumper for a 67. Okay. And what we did is we flipped it upside down. Uh -huh. We built the entire platform out of sheet metal, built the entire frame for the supports under it. Then we took a secondary Camaro bumper and we split it uh, and sectioned it so we could put our extensions on the sides. Right, right. And then we added a third one, which we just bought. It was a complete, and then I'm using about half of each side, and it'll make the wrap around to the back that goes all the way to the chest. The fabrication of the other side of the bumper. And you can see he's making his fits to make sure that everything's nice and smooth. So it's constantly tweaking on the metal, it's constantly getting your different joints together, getting things set the way you want before you finally make your tacks, because there's no real reason to make a tack on there if it's wrong. So put it together, if you like it, good. If not, go make your adjustments to it. And that's what Casey's been doing here for a while on this now. But Casey wants to get it right, he knows he's going to get it right, it's just a matter of time. So he's got his fit and he's got it packed on there now. Now he's going to come on in here and he's going to do some adjusting. Okay, Casey, so now this side looks a little bit different than the other side. What's going to be your process here on this? All right, so we got a little bit thicker rollover on this back reveal than on the front. So mm -hmm. what we're going to do is we'll build uh, a weld all the way around, and then we'll go ahead and we'll run another bead just staggered okay. below it to make a nice round over and meet that edge. Right. Okay. See here, he's got his double pass down through here. He's going to be able to smooth that out so that it gives it the same contour as the other side. of just grinding everything off that he's all that metal he put on there he's gonna grind it all down all right so what he's done now is he had a few low spots on his welds he had through here all he's doing is filling in the holes and he's gonna grind that down and conform it to look like the rest of it and there is the finished product well it's not finished but it is fabricated it'll have to go get some uh sanding and filling and painting and some bondo work body work so that's your uh that's what casey has done for the little bit of time i've been here today hey dom how's it going good how are you doing all right hanging in there at least you're not hanging out that would be embarrassing yes 
<laughs> well, to some. <laughs> what are you doing, buddy? Hooking uh, up the alternator? Yeah, just finishing up a couple little things here and there. Right. Is this motor getting close to being fired? It's already been fired. Oh, I missed it. Yep. Yep. How'd it perform? Uh, it did all right. Yeah? Yeah, had a little setback. The motor was timed uh, 180 out. Uh-oh. So what happens when that go when you time it like that? It only runs on four cylinders? No, it just backfires out the intake and the exhaust. Really? Yep. It just makes loud bangs and doesn't do anything. I bet that would have been fun to see. Oh, yeah. People uh, jumping and skipping and hopping around? Yeah, basically. <laughs> but quick fix, just flip the distributor 180 and then right, took right. it a whole three minutes. And then it would turn the key and fire right up. So this has had uh, coilovers put her all the way around on it. This motor has been taken out. It's been refreshed, repainted. It's had electronic fuel ignition put on it, mm -hmm. and it also has had an accessory drive put on it and a new radiator. Yeah, electric fans and all the works. Right, so. It's been brought up to today's fans. So now you set the timing, which means you're you're moving the distributor back and forth, correct? Correct. So why doesn't that distributor move when you're going down the road in vibration or whatever? Is it got a lock on it? Yeah, there's a lock collar on it. Okay. So you lock the lock collar down, it can't move anymore. Okay. So all you do is just tighten down a little nut underneath there and it locks the distributor in place. Yep, that's it. Alright. So Dom, does that stay with the car now? Yes, that is the customer's handheld. Uh -huh. They really shouldn't need it for any reason other than a peace of mind. They can look at it, see what it's doing. Right. Um, but once I'm done with it, they won't have to touch it for any reason. It's more of a, it could be used as a diagnostics tool okay. later on if it needs it. Right. Or if they want to be extra sure of coolant temp or something, they can see what the actual ECU is seeing. Um, versus these old analog gauges that might be, you know, it's hard to tell. Maybe the needle's a little bit this way or this way. Right, you don't know right. how accurate the old analog gauges are. Right. That's the actual reading of the, the, the brand new sensors in the motor. So right now I'm just kind of letting it idle. Um, mm -hmm. Checking to see how much corrections the computer is doing. Uh, I wrote a very generic base map to it. So I'm letting it run. Just getting some computer feedback on how close the map is. I'm gonna let it do some corrections here and there. I'll try to sweep it through an RPM range just lightly to see how it's doing, get some measurements of the motor, and then I'll pull the software off of it and I'll check it with my laptop and I'm gonna change a lot of stuff. Uh, target AFR, so I'm gonna try to lean it out, get some better gas mileage, better drivability. I'll smooth the timing tables out. Um, change some startup stuff, some throttle enrichment, so it should run and drive like a brand new car does. Um, it won't, you know, I try to eliminate some of the, the exhaust smell that most people smell. It's typically because these cars like to run rich, the older style, but with modern electronics, you can lean them out like newer cars. Get a little bit better gas mileage and stuff of that sort, but. More friendly to the environment. Yeah, I mean, I look at it this way. If, the, if you don't need to burn the fuel, why burn it? Right money in your pocket right, it's not yeah. hurting, hurting the car at all sure so, uh, i try to focus on drivability with it.
All right, thanks for watching another edition of Drive In Garage with Alan. I hope you enjoyed what you watched these crazy guys doing up here. So do me a favor, like and subscribe to the channel, right, Dom? That's right. Like and subscribe. Like and subscribe or die. Or die. As Eric says. <laughs>